Hi, I'm Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich in the First Warren Storm Center here in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's that time of year, the end of October. I do my annual winter forecast. There's been a lot of forecasts already out there. We'll get into some of that, but I want to talk about some of the influences we're looking at for the upcoming winter season here in the southeast. The first one is going to be the impact of a weak El Nino, and right now, El Nino is weak. It doesn't look like it's going to be a very strong El Nino, and there are some signs we may even weaken a little bit further. One of the other big impacts is solar minimum. We are right now in a minimum in solar activity, which has had a huge impact on the amount of incoming radiation, which then warms the earth. The other thing we're going to keep an eye on, this is probably key, it's kind of interconnected with the impact of weak El Nino. What is the primary storm track going to be here in the southeast? The other one I'm keeping an eye on, Arctic temperatures. While they're still not where they were 15 to 20 years ago, in the last five to six years, they are getting much cooler and the sea ice is doing much better. Let's start off with looking at what the government forecast was for the upcoming winter. You can see the wetter than normal conditions here across the southern tier. Drier than normal here in the Tennessee and Ohio. I'm not really buying that right now and equal chances elsewhere. We'll get more into why that's wetter down there. That's somewhat what I agree with. Temperature wise could not disagree with this more. They have much warmer than average temperatures here in the northern part of the country. I just don't think that's going to happen. The cooler than average, I'm tending to agree with this a little more, but I'm going to tell you that is not going to happen. And here's one reason why. This is the October pattern so far, and look how below normal that same area is through the first 19 months of Oct or 19 days of October here. So this area is already much cooler than they anticipated. And it looks like the pattern's kind of setting into much cooler temperatures in the northern half of the country. Next, we turn to El Nino. Where is El Nino right now? When you get north of this line, the red areas, those are El Ninos. Right now, we're in a weak El Nino. This was the super El Nino back in 1998, to give you some perspective, and then back in the early 80s. Nowhere near that. All the blues are areas of La Nina. So what are we talking about for the upcoming winter season? I see two primary storm tracks, one being the southern branch, thanks to El Nino. This is when we get those big gulf storms that move up the east coast. This is the clipper system, basically, up here in the northern branch, and this is really going to bottle up most of the Arctic air, but when these two can phase into a full latitude trough, that's when we'll get the big time storms here across the southeast. This is typically the kind of pattern where we get big areas of low pressure that throw moisture back up and over a cold air mass, which sets up shop here in the southeast. So what kind of snowfall are we talking about? Right now, it looks like we will see a swath of above average snowfall in white. That includes the Piedmont of North Carolina into the Virginia Piedmont. And from the central Appalachians all the way into the uh, foothills of the Virginias up into parts of the D.C. area, we could have some big time snows. That's because I anticipate some big nor'easters moving up the coast, giving us a band of heavy snow. Now, colder than normal temperatures all across the southeast. This is because we're going to see a lot of Arctic outbreaks, but more because we're going to see a lot of clouds and showers with that persistent southerly branch. So this is not an indication that we'll see big Arctic outbreaks, just a lot of clouds and showers. But I do think we'll see much colder than average temperatures here across most of the western Carolinas into the Virginias. Now, what does this all mean? Well, kind of some of the highlights I'm looking at for the upcoming season. When do those two fronts, basically those the polar jet and the subtropical jet, kind of phase up? That's when we'll get big time storms. So we'll keep an eye on that. That means we'll probably see a couple of big time storms, but in between those big time storms, we could have a huge ice potential because with the track down to the south, we could get some of that ice as the moisture gets thrown up and over that cold air wedge up against the mountains. But that also means in between between those big storms and ice storms, we're going to have quite a few rainy, uh, cold rain events here across the southeast. So while I don't think it's going to be snowy and cold the entire winter, it does look like we'll have a lot of clouds and showers, which will keep the temperatures down. And intermittently, we're going to have some big time storms. So we may see above average snow, not because it's going to snow a lot over three months, but we could get a couple of big time storms. And that looks like the case. Now, as we go through the winter season, we'll have a much better idea as we get into the month to month forecast, as we start looking at Hobb-Mueller diagrams, which are basically tracking out the storm path around the, around the world. Once we get into the month of November and December, we'll have a much better idea. But just to give you an idea of what we're expecting for the upcoming winter, I would count on it being cold and snowier than normal.